Good morning, everybody. Uh, I hope you can hear me loud and clear. Maybe I'll take it in my hand. It's uh, a little bit easier. Um, super. Uh, a lot of familiar faces here. Um, I know I have limited time, so I will be racing a bit through some of the slides. If you think anything is interesting or you would like to learn more, I'll stay um, after this presentation a bit longer. I'm so happy to, to, to catch up. My, uh, my name is Ivo. I'm also local here uh, in Chicago, a managing partner at the PropTech Connection. Um, and I'm going to run you through a few uh, things here, some observations in terms of what we do and what we see in market and some of the global trends uh, that we are uh, seeing. Obviously, um, the first thing I think uh, that is um, interesting to, to mention is what, what is PropTech, right? For us, it's a, it's a catch-all term that effectively describes um, um, technology impacting space. That's the simple uh, definition. The more complex one is effectively, it's an ever-going, ever-evolving kind of definition that uh, changes with the nature of, of real estate. And um, what we're starting to see is, you know, prop tech, construction tech, smart cities, urban tech, um, these are all coming together, right? And for us, it's really about use case applicability. Um, we started the PropTech Connection. We have now four uh, offices. We're headquartered in Sydney. We have an office in Tokyo, uh, Amsterdam, and here in Chicago. And we started this business uh, under the radar six, seven years ago. Um, but now we've grown quite significantly, and we're looking to open an office in the Middle East uh, 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 probably early next year. What we do is we're an independent strategic prop tech advisory, and we sit in the middle between the three different actors in this ecosystem. So investors, uh, technology buyers, and the startups. Um, the reason why we started this is that we saw, um, and six, seven years ago, we saw a number of challenges in the market. First, um, we saw a very fragmented and inefficient market. So uh, I think we're tracking 19,000 startups in this uh, domain. Um, and a lot of companies are doing similar things. So if you look in terms of sensors in this building, there's probably 300 different sensor companies uh, selling sensors, all calling REITs, uh, uh, telling them they have the best sensor. So it's very difficult for a potential tech buyer, might be construction company, uh, real estate company, engineering group, uh, an architect, or architectural firm, whoever is the customer, to actually understand which companies are out there, which ones are being used in U Asia, Europe, the US, why is that happening, which ones are winning, what is that reason for it? So really giving that global visibility and, and, and some of those insights. Um, but fragmentation by default means poor adoption, right? So that was challenge number one. Challenge number two is it's very, there's very poor ways of accessing that, that ecosystem. Uh, uh, we think um, you have accelerator programs, VC funds is obviously one, um, uh, you have events, but there wasn't a, a global data-driven market intelligence platform that was facilitating that. So, so that's a, a, a two. Um, and then uh, the third reason was that we saw a lot of, and we continue to see that, um, a lot of um, technologies front and center now of a lot of conversations. We, we go to quite a number of institutional uh, events and everybody's talking about tech, right? And to uh, Jenny's point and also Carl, um, after uh, uh, forestry and hunting, I believe real estate and construction are indeed some of the least digitized industries. So it is a big opportunity, but a lot of companies are throwing a lot of capital against it. And a lot of them are really struggling um, for a number of reasons. So we thought there had to be a better system to do this. So that's the reason why we started. In a nutshell, uh, on the investor side, we have relationships with um, sovereign wealth funds. I was recently at PIF in, in Saudi Arabia, for example. Um, and they're looking at a number of things, giga projects and, and, and really leveraging tech, but they don't have a local ecosystem that can facilitate that. So they're looking into the US market, European market for a number of those uh, opportunities. Uh, private equity funds, institutional guys, and a lot of uh, uh, VC funds. There's 2,800 funds that have invested in the prop tech domain. And um, so you start to see a lot of generic funds now coming into this uh, market. But um, what we primarily do here, we have a lot of investor friends, but we also have mandates uh, of a few uh, sorry, corporate VCs, um, three of which are Fortune 100s. Um, and just to give you a, a high level view of what we do there. So um, uh, one of our clients is Mitsubishi Corporation, for example, in Japan. Um, they have more than a billion dollars to deploy and they write checks between 10, 20 and 100 million. And they come to us and they have to build 250,000 homes for our projects in Indonesia. Uh, they are reallocating a capital and they come to us and say, hey guys, where is the 3D printing market? Which companies are out there? How is Artesia's benchmarked against the competition? Uh, who is invested in the space? What's happening? What kind of different technology do you have? Who is winning in the US, Europe, Asia? Why is that happening? We sit with their team um, mapping out their strategic uh, needs, their hierarchy of needs. 
and then we source the best companies globally that meet that criteria. And then we present it to them. So we stay independent. We give them global view backed by, by data. So that's what we do for, for investors. On the tech buyer side, so these are the REITs, construction companies, engineering groups. Um, very, very quickly, um, we help implementing the digital strategy. Um, so folks come with us with a specific use case. So one of our clients is a major shopping mall operator in the Middle East. And they, for example, say, hey, guys, what tag is out there that can drive more food traffic to our shopping malls? Or you have a construction company that might say, what tag is out there that can increase health and safety on our job sites? And obviously, there's a lot behind it, right? So we really uh, go behind it, map out that use case. We talk about integration criteria, decision-making process, budgeting, um, and a lot of other metrics. So we do a similar process. We write a report, and then we source the companies globally that meet those uh, uh, criteria. We build a platform for that. So we build a real estate innovation platform. We also build a, a deal platform for investors. And then on the startup side, this is uh, what we think is most valuable in our business. We spend six years, a lot of time, a lot of capital, and a lot of resources mapping out the global ecosystem. Um, so we have 19,000 startups in, the, in our database. We have 130 data point analysis for each startup, how we look at them. So what we're able to do is look at a use case stack offering and another uh, 50, 60 filters behind it. And with a very high degree of confidence, we can uh, do that uh, matchmaking on a, global, on a global scale. So we're very data driven. Um, and the reasons why we're different than clients like uh, to work with us, I would say is one, we're independent. And this is really, really key. So we don't push one specific company. If you work for an investor or a, a tech buyer, they pay us. So uh, our role is to find the best strategic alignment um, and we expedite the process to effectively getting quicker to the market uh, uh, globally. And then uh, secondly, um, our management team has worked across uh, each ecosystem. So worked for prop tech and clean tech VC funds, worked for REITs and construction companies. And also every single day we speak to technology companies pivoting to solve some of the problems on the other side. So we have a pretty good pulse on the market. We've done a number of um, um, speaking engagements at, at larger, well-established um, uh, entities. And we have some two really exciting events coming up in, in Saudi, uh, where we also will be meeting uh, the Minister of Housing there because they have a lot of challenges. But this is for us how we look at um, sourcing tech. This is the complexity of sourcing technology for either real estate or construction. So what we've done is we looked at all the different use cases. So we have identified over 600. Then we mapped it against all the different kinds of technology types. So um, if you look, for example, 3D printing, our client could have chosen to look into modular, right? So that is effectively a different tech type. Uh, we mapped it against real estate metrics. One of the key challenges that we saw six years ago is that um, the benefits of technology uh, mapping against real estate and construction was very poorly achieved. Um, so that's what we tried to do. And then thirdly, we have a very sophisticated system in terms of you know tracking all these companies, what they're doing, uh, et cetera. So really giving them global uh, uh, visibility. A couple uh, things here, uh, the uniqueness of, of PropTech. Um, I think a few people touched already upon it. It's the, um, the definition, right? So I try to keep it simple. And what you what you start to see is obviously the de demarcation of of real estate has been further uh, eroded post post COVID, and um, you see the hotelization of office space. You see, in a lot of um, uh, places outside the US, I would say Mexico or Indonesia, a lot of countries actually in Asia where a lot of office space is being converted into residential uh, space and CBDs. Um, tax strategies are hyper localized. For us, every use case is different. What may work for shopping mall operator one may not work for shopping mall operator too. So um, um, every asset is different, every portfolio is different. So sourcing tech is very specific to the client. This is really, really important for us. Um, the tech buyer is often not the user. So there's a huge gap between whoever's buying it and actually the one that is using it. Uh, the um, power dynamic of, of global customers, um, I think this is interesting. We actually believe that we're at a pivotal moment in, in this space where um, traditional real estate companies did not need necessarily uh, to innovate because you know it was business as usual and things were going fine. And what we're starting to see now is that there's really um, a change between the leading pack and the folks that are uh, uh, behind where you start to see B-grade, C-grade kind of assets um, really struggling in the current capital uh, market uh, uh, environment. Um, a couple of things here. We, um, we believe that, for example, subcontractors are heavily underserved in terms of technology access and um, um, in the AEC space, there is a lot of uh, opportunity and what we actually see, and I think 
that also speaks to some of the things and the people that have been speaking here is that we are, and I think David is also a good example, people that come out of this ecosystem that come into the tech space. So they're moving from, let's say, the customer side to the startup side. And a lot of them are actually very successful um, because one, they understand the, uh, the problem. Typically, they, that's a problem they, they run in, in their professional career and then they move to the startup side to try to solve it. Plus they have it in that work. So um, that's, uh, that's uh, something that we uh, uh, see. And um, similar solutions, as I mentioned, there's a lot of companies doing similar things uh, uh, globally. Um, this one I spoke about uh, uh, very briefly. So effectively, there's over 6,000 construction tech companies globally. Um, so what we effectively do is what's it with our client, really trying to understand what they want. And then we do that sourcing piece, very specific and strategic to the needs of, of the client. So we expedite the process, we de-risk, and we increase the likelihood of successfully uh, uh, technology, technology onboarding. But what it also means is that we're in a, in a capacity to sometimes bring, let's say, a vendor from Brazil to a client in, in Saudi Arabia that they had never heard of, never knew of, but uh, we believe it's the best uh, uh, suited uh, solution for them. The way we look in PropTech is very macro, so we come a little bit from a different uh, lens. Here in orange, uh, I pulled out a few things that we think um, are really driving uh, uh, the space. I don't have the time to dig in uh, all of them, but somebody wants to chat later, I'm happy uh, uh, to do so. Um, capital market rates obviously is driving a lot of the opportunities and challenges in the market. Space repurposing is a very big and hot topic for a number of our clients. Uh, uh, needless to say, and, and everybody's talking about AI, right? What is, how is AI going to impact construction? How to leverage across our operational phase? And there's a lot of uh, uh, questions we get from, uh, from our institutional relationships. And um, one point I wanted to note here is that this concept of prop tech is very regional biased. The problems you guys have here in the US are completely different than in Nigeria or Israel or wherever that may be. Um, so it's very bespoke. Um, Asia, we, we, for example, we, we break down into three different uh, uh, buckets. One is, let's say, first tier, um, Australia, Singapore, Hong Kong, um, Japan. And then second is effectively um, countries with favorable demographics, so high growth uh, economies, young uh, average age, like Saudi Arabia. There's a lot of, a lot of opportunity, we think. Uh, Indonesia, India, uh, we see there's a, close to 3,000 startups in the space in India, very much focused on the software space, and we see a number of our relationships really wanting to get access to, to see what's going on uh, uh, there. If you look, for example, in a market like, uh, like Israel, you have 7,500 startups in an eight-mile radius in Tel Aviv. Very strong cyber background, intelligence, et cetera, but because of that, you see a lot of good startups coming in, into that domain. Nigeria, as an example, if you want to if you want to rent a, a house, you have to pay a 20% commission and you have to pay your rent one year upfront. So these are things that we're not familiar with here in the US, but these are some of the problems that are very local to a specific uh, uh, market. Um, here's some, just quickly, some, some numbers, some metrics that I think are really vital. Um, um, I think um, post COVID, obviously um, from, uh, work from home has significantly changed. The consumption of real estate has dramatically changed as you see from 50 percent points to 62 this is massive right and, and we think this is uh, uh, something that will uh, uh, will stay um very quickly just some quick insights in terms of uh, the ai space what we're seeing here there's a lot of excitement uh, in the market in the vc world uh, we recently saw a deal that was doing um 700 000, uh, annual recurring revenue that got multiple offers on a $300 million uh, post money uh, evaluation, which is typically you would see 10, 15 X multipliers, but here it was a couple hundred. So that speaks obviously to some of the uh, um, um, excitement. We just did a deep dive for one of our clients in the uh, AI space um, and what we uh, was in construction company. And what we saw is that actually most adoption is currently taking place in, in Asia. Countries like uh, South Korea, uh, for example, where you see a lot of those stacks coming in, uh, which is pretty interesting. And also what we do with our clients, we believe being successful in terms of technology is having a very um, a straight uh, strategy. Uh, we have identified uh, 13 different uh, digital strategies in terms of how you can approach the market. And, and we think this is really key to be uh, uh, successful. Um, here quickly, a few uh, uh, things that we believe will 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 happen. Um, one, um, 
I personally believe that the, the real estate agencies are best placed to actually drive a lot of momentum because they have a global footprint, uh, et cetera. I think from an investment standpoint, also that Jenny mentioned, what we are starting to see is that actually a lot of private equity funds are coming into the space much earlier uh, in, into the cycle because um, um, prop tech is, is much stickier, right? And, and FinTech, for example, so if you're selling into a CBRA or JLL, takes a lot of time for a startup, it's very expensive to, to get actually through that hurdle with funds, et cetera. But if you obviously are successful and, and get through an RFP, you tend to have three, four, five year contracts. Um, so uh, the risk appetite is much lower, meaning that some of these private equity funds are, um, are willing to, to make some of these bets much earlier in, in, in some of those uh, uh, opportunities. Final takeaways, again, I, was, uh, I told you I would be racing uh, uh, through some of the slides just um, um, uh, in the interest uh, of, uh, of time. Uh, some of the, the takeaways that I pulled here uh, together, um, I think two is really key. Uh, the relationship between um, uh, asset owner and um, user is dramatically changing. It used to be between the tenant and the owner. And we believe, for example, that um, the best uh, uh, performing asset owners know every single detail about the employee, what age they are, what they're doing, what they studied, et cetera. So we see a lot of tech coming in uh, uh, there, and we also believe if you look into, for example, the, the energy transition, a lot of the easy wins have already been materialized, so the point solutions, uh, and, and for that reason, we think uh, now it's really about integration, bringing a lot of those uh, 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 solutions uh, uh, together, so middleware, middleware platforms, we think, have a, have a good um, um, uh, opportunity in the market. Um, yeah, with that being said, again, looking at the clock, uh, in a nutshell, this is a little bit about us, what we do. Happy to elaborate more. If anybody has any questions, I'll, I'll be around. I'll leave my business cards if anybody wants to have a conversation later. And uh, forgot by thanking everybody to um, here from Chicago Innovate to have me here and uh, share a bit more about what we're seeing in the, in the market. So thank you so much.